The following is a presentation of Nachi Creek Baptist Church in Madisonville, Tennessee. For more information, please visit nachicreekbaptist.org.
trumpets are sounding, all the children will play. The king is coming. The king is coming. There you go. That's <coughs> what I want to say. Clarinet was a mid-song. The gays were even singing it last night, and I was thinking, I was just singing The king is coming. Is it in this book or mm -hmm. in the little red book? It's in one of our books. Or a black book. I don't have one. Thank you. Thank you for the name of the song. The king is coming.
to see you in God's house on Christmas morning and uh, I was told a moment ago that one of our senior pastor's wife sister Catherine Watson has a great grandson that was born this morning and I believe his name was amen so uh, I think his name was Colt is what they're going to call him Van's boy and I thought about uh, some 30 some odd years I better not get all the numbers on it uh, I had a little girl born on Christmas morning my oldest daughter is born on Christmas so uh, I'm grateful Jesus came amen that's what's most important we wouldn't have Christmas if it was for him thank you for coming this morning I know that many churches have dismissed but uh, I, I just can't hardly uh, think about not worshiping the King of Kings this morning because that's the very reason we got a church. Amen. We're going to take the offering this morning, then we're going to try to share the Word of God. So uh, you'll be much in prayer for the meeting. The guys, come on, and we'll take the offering this morning. Thank you, ladies. Let me thank you for this year and uh, all the prayers and support that uh, through God's grace he's given to all of us and especially that you've given to Notcha Creek Church and 
you've given your tithes and offerings, and God's done many wonderful things. I, I could do a year's closeout, but uh, I think that uh, we've come to worship the Lord. I'm just going to give him praise for all he's done and for the calls and the gifts and the cards and whatever, just anything that you've done for me and my family. Thank you this morning. Uh, Melanie and I was praying this morning, talking to our children. And uh, it's uh, when I look at how that God has blessed me and our family. You know, this morning, our children got up on their own. They was able to feed themselves. They had a warm bed. They had a place to sleep. And uh, sometimes we forget those little blessings. I could share some things that's happened this past week with a little family. And I tell you, folks, we are tremendously blessed in America. So if you don't have anything else, just thank God for Jesus. And then number two, thank him for the clothes on your back or what you've got. Galatians chapter number four. I want to share a, verse, a couple of verses of Scripture with you. And uh, I want to talk to you for a few minutes Three little thoughts. On time, on target, on task. On time, on target, and on task. Are you at Galatians 4? Amen. The Bible talks in the first part of this, it talks about uh, verse 1. I, I'm just going to read it. Now I say... That the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth not, nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord of all. Paul was explaining to them in custom. A little baby, till they come to the age of manhood, they were counted no more than a servant in the household of their father. I remember... Many years ago, when the preacher come, he got the chicken breast. Amen. He got the best part of the chicken. And I remember as a little boy, all I ever got to eat was the gizzards. <laughs> and uh, I wondered why that I did that. But in those days, it's a custom for uh, the adults in America. They ate and the children came last. And we find the Bible says here that the son differed not from a servant, but under the tutor, a governor, until the time of appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Remember when you were under the elements of the world, the influence of the world? Satan just took you and did what he wanted to with you. Then he says, verse 4, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, and we can cry, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more servants. Remember what he said? There's a time, use this like a servant. But God sent forth his spirit and put it in your heart. Now you're not a servant no more, but a son. And if you are a son, then the Bible says that we are heirs of God through Christ. The Bible teaches us here that uh, Paul was celebrating and he was talking about Christmas in a different way that we talk about him today. On this Christmas morning, I know that many of us are talking about the gifts and we're talking about the, uh, the, uh, all the lights and uh, people are talking about the decorations and they're talking about all the things that have developed over the years in a Western Christianity. How that people celebrate Christmas in many different avenues. I noticed yesterday or uh, maybe Friday, they, Nike put on uh, uh, a new uh, uh, tennis shoe 
called the Michael Jordan, and uh, they were mobs that were out over those things. They were shooting at one another in the malls, and they went crazy over a, a tennis shoe. I want you to know, folks, uh, this world celebrates Christmas in many ways. I, I saw ads in the newspaper that you can get your uh, uh, drinks at a discount because of Christmas, and I know that this world celebrates uh, uh, Christmas in many different ways. We put Santa in the yard, and we put reindeers beside of him, then we put Mary in in the Christ child there. And I, I just know that we've got all kinds of different types of way to celebrate the Lord Jesus. And we sing Christmas carols and uh, we do candlelight services and his memory. We do a lot of those things. But I find that uh, preachers, when they talk about Christmas, they talk about the angels coming to Mary and uh, we find that uh, the Bible says the shepherds went out and, and saw the Christ child. And, and we done been through that in a lot of our services. This morning, let's just celebrate and worship Jesus as the Apostle Paul lays it out in the book of Galatians. First of all, we find that Paul says that the way that we can celebrate Christ is that, uh, first of all, is God is always on time. Thank God. God is always on time. You see, he's a on-time God. Why? Because the Bible says in verse number 4, it says, in the fullness of time. I'm grateful to tell you folks that Jesus never come a day early. Uh, folks, I know he never come a day late. I'm grateful that Jesus was on time. I'm grateful to tell you today that folks, uh, we think about being, having time and we think about the importance of time. We think about our plans, and we just got to have things on time. I don't know about you, but sometimes we don't get uh, everything ready on time like we need to, even Christmas. Sometimes Christmas slips up on us, and we're so busy about other things, uh, and we turn around, and it's the last week of Christmas, and we eat our fingernails off trying to figure out how we're going to get everything put together. And I know some way, somehow it does. It happens. And folks, we, we're looking for peace at Christmas time, and here's, um, the, there's usually confusion. Uh, we're looking for joy, and there, uh, everything's, uh, people are just juggling from this thing to that. Sometimes we're, we're looking uh, for the Christ child and we're thinking about church and all those things, uh, but there's confusion and, and, and all these things going on. But I think about what Paul said. He says, listen, God is always on time. In verse 4 he said, but when the fullness of time was come, aren't you grateful that God uh, sent forth his son? Aren't you grateful that the Bible says uh, that God is always on time? I thought about how important it is that God points out in his word that he's always on time. The word of God says after God had made everything in Genesis 1, the word of God says in Genesis chapter 2 uh, that Adam began to name everything. He began to, tell, uh, began to give the names of every creature and everything upon the face of the earth. And after Adam had got through, the last thing God made was a woman. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if God had made the woman before he made everything, uh, I don't know about this, but maybe they would have not named them what they should have named them. Uh, Adam might have been influenced, but God said, listen, I want you to do it this way. I want it to be done this way. And the Bible says that God made everything. Adam named it, then along came Eve. And the Bible teaches us um, that, folks, whenever God did this, I believe, folks, he did it at the right time. Why? Because he showed Adam that he needed a helpmate. Aren't you grateful God gives us helpmates? Aren't you grateful that God has sent somebody our way? The Bible tells us uh, that, folks, after creation, what happened? The Word of God says um, that man become evil upon the face of the earth. And the Word of God says in Genesis chapter 6, uh, the imagination of man's heart was on evil constantly. And the Word of God says um, that God told Noah to build an ark. 
And the Word of God says for 120 years, uh, God allowed him to build that ark. And the Word of God says this, uh, the seventh chapter, I believe along about 12, 14 long in that area, the Bible says in the 600th year, of the 17th day of the month of May of Noah's life. The Bible says that God sent him in. And the Word of God says, and the floods came upon the earth. But before the floods came, God said in the 7th chapter that seven days had passed. Listen, folks, I believe there's always a span of grace. I believe that God is always on time. And the Word of God says, why? Because he came in the fullness of the, of the of when the fullness of time was. I'm grateful to tell you that whenever uh, after the, the, the Bible says the flood come, here comes uh, the Bible tells us Abraham come along. I believe it was in the right time. Why? Because Abraham was 99 year old and the Word of God says that God told him he's going to have a son. And the Word of God says uh, in the book of Genesis at 100 year old uh, uh, Abraham, uh, brothers he rejoiced to have a son named Isaac. After that the Bible says they was in bondage 430 years and God sent a man, Moses, from the backside of the desert how to lead his people out. Of 40 years he was back there but God sent him right on time. Of the last chapter of the book of Genesis, of the word of God tells us about Joseph from verse, of chapter 37 on down talks about Joseph and the Bible says in the 50th chapter of that Joseph died and he looked at his brother and he said these words. Uh, uh, you thought it for evil, but God wrought it for good. You wonder what's going on in America, uh, why God's grace is still shine, uh, shining upon America. I believe this, folks. Uh, it's not time for God to come yet. I believe God's got to span the grace. I believe the Bible says that Jesus will come when it's time. I believe the Word of God teaches us uh, that the Word tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, uh, it talks about uh, that He came in the volume of the book. I believe when you study the Psalms, you'll study the 40th chapter, and you'll get verse 7 and 8. It talks about uh, when Christ was to be born. Hey, folks, and it is uh, to do the will of God. I believe, folks, whenever Mary conceived that Christ child, I believe is right on time. I believe, folks, when she went down to Elizabeth's house and the Word of God says Elizabeth was six months uh, in the way and the Word of God says she told Elizabeth about being with child and the Word of God says she began to rejoice uh, and said, my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. Uh, folks, I'm telling you, the Bible says the Holy Ghost showed up and John the Baptist leaped in Elizabeth's womb. Uh, I want you to know, folks, Jesus came came right on time. I believe that whatever it comes time, it might be today, it might be tomorrow, it might be a thousand years from now, but I believe one of these days the Son of the living God is going to come back to this earth. Uh, I believe Jesus is going to step out of the ports of glory. I believe Jesus is going to sound the trumpet. Uh, I believe the dead in Christ is going to rise first. Uh, I thought about Harky Yakes. They called us yesterday and said, Harky Yakes, had passed away, had a heart attack. And I just thought the first thing had come to my mind, hey, I tell you, this is the best Christmas heart you'll ever experience. Uh, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, this world is a wonderful place. I love my family. But one of these days, uh, I'm going to meet the gift that God gave. Uh, uh, when he gave his only begotten son, uh, it might be July, but thank God it'll be Christmas there. Well, because I'll be in the presence of God. You see, the Bible says um, that God is always on time. We sing a song uh, sometimes about God uh, right on time. Amen. He came to Lazarus just right on time. He is four days dead, but thank God Jesus was right on time. I don't know about you, but uh, whenever I got born again, Jesus was there. Uh, when I got saved by his grace, uh, uh, he showed up right on time. Uh, I believe, folks, he has to show up before you can get saved by the grace of God. You say, preacher, uh, how you know that the Bible says you're begotten? 
begotten by the Word, and you're drawn by the Spirit of God. Uh, I believe the Word of God teaches me uh, that in the fullness of time, uh, uh, the Bible says God sent forth His Son. First of all, we find uh, um, that the Word tells us uh, that we have an on-time God. God is always on time. Number two is God is always on target. Aren't you grateful for that? Aren't you grateful that God's on target? I took uh, Lindsay and Tally and uh, our family. We went out the while back in um, November and Thanksgiving, and, and we took. I took a gun, some guns, uh, and uh, they began to shoot the targets. And, and I was amazed that Lindsay, she could shoot that target at 50 yards. She could ring the bell, and uh, Tally could ring the bell. Even her uh, mama took an open sight 22 and rung the bell at 50 yards, and I got worried. I thought, man, she don't need a scope. I better, I better be careful around the house. I, I hid the bullets, boys. I took them down and put them up, hid them out, because you see, if she gets ill, you, you'll know that she can, uh, <laughs> she'd be able to uh, hit surely a broad target like me. Amen. But I find that uh, sometimes we miss the target, do we not? But I'm grateful God hit the target. You see, God is a, uh, he's on target. And the Bible says the latter part of verse 4, uh, how is he on target? God sending forth his son made of woman under law. I tell you what the target was, uh, that mankind was lost without Jesus. Uh, uh, mankind, folks, uh, uh, needed a Savior. God was on target. What do you mean, preacher? I believe, uh, folks, that whatever uh, God saw, that man needed a Savior. Uh, folks, this thing didn't happen just overnight. But the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse number uh, 15, it talks about the first promise um, that God would send his son uh, he says, when I send him, uh, there's going to be an intimacy uh, between thy seed and his seed, uh, and thou shalt bruise his heel. But thank God he'll bruise thy head. I want you to know, folks, uh, he was on time with it, but thank God he was on target. Why? Because man needed a Savior, and the Bible says that God sent him at the right time and the right place. What did the Word of God say? The, the three wise men come, and they said, We saw his star in the east. He was on target. He was right on target, really needed a Savior. And the Bible tells us that he came on target. Why? Because he came. You see, he could have come as a king, but he come as a little baby, born in a little stable, and listen, the Word of God says he, come with a, he came with a humble beginning. And the Word of God says um, that, folks, he come. He could have come highly exalted, but the Bible says in Philippians 2, verse 5 through 7, it says, um, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, uh, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, uh, but took upon himself um, no reputation and become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Uh, what was the target? God's target was mankind, that God might redeem deem them back to him how that folks that we could be saved by the grace of God why because we were under the curse of the law Gentiles sitting here this morning how we would have never gathered here if it hadn't have been for Jesus being on target to he come that we might have love and that you and I might experience a life more abundantly the word of God says he's on target yeah God sent the Spirit of God on Pentecost. He is on target. Whenever the Bible says that old Stephen's been stoned, God was on target. What, what do you mean on target? God always comes to where his people are. The Bible says that whenever Paul was on the road to Damascus, God was on target. Listen, whenever Peter was in the jailhouse in Acts 12, they put him in there. I, I find that the Word of God says that God was on target. Whenever Peter in chapter 10 was on the housetop, and a little boy, a Gentile boy named Cornelius, wanted a Savior, thank God God was on target. 
And the Bible says when Paul and Silas uh, was put in that uh, jail at uh, Caesarea Philippi, and listen, folks, the jailer put them into the third part of the, of the jail. He done shut three doors behind them. And listen, the Bible says he had been commissioned. If you let them boys go, uh, you know what will happen? You get their punishment. And he put them in there, but thank God, I've got a God that was on target. <laughs> he come and delivered them. Why did he come to mankind? He come to where we were. Where were you at when God got you? What was you doing when God got you? He's on target in his own time. I remember when the Holy Spirit, I, I can't tell you the day, but I, or even the night, I, uh, when I started getting the conviction, it, it was at a day service at Big Bethlehem Baptist Church. And they had day services, and when we had those day services, they'd take us from the school down there, a pretty good walk, and we'd go down there. And I remember uh, when I got under conviction, but uh, it took me quite a few years to uh, ever get to the point that I, I, I really laid aside it and wanted Jesus to come into my heart. He was always on time. He was always on target of my heart. Listen, he would speak to me, and the Spirit of God would prog me. I, I would refuse. And whenever they gave an altar call, I learned if you played like you was asleep, you wouldn't have nobody come talk to you. <laughs> Some of y'all remember that? Well, we used to have meetings on Sunday morning and have them on Sunday night and have revivals. We'd have a Monday morning revival and Monday night. And, and, and folks, it was nothing for the go two weeks. Revival morning and night. And you know what they do when the altar call, when the preacher get up, he just get up and preach. And, and I've heard James Patton say this and Connor Klein say, listen, in our day, you just get up and read the scripture and people get happy and go shouting. Then they get up and preach a few minutes. And, and when they got through preaching, they'd start giving an altar call. They'd sing, oh, just as I am, or the blood, or something along that line. They'd have an altar call. And you know what happened? Old saints of God would start moving from their pew, and they'd start walking into the congregation. And in my day, at night, they'd go out into the, uh, into the parking lot. And if they saw you stand out there, they'd come talk to you about Jesus. And I guarantee you, some of you folks sitting here tonight, uh, this morning is a product of somebody getting a burden for you and praying for you and maybe encouraging you to get saved by the grace of God. You know what they were? They were encouragers. Why? Because God put it on their heart. Uh, uh, listen, they knew uh, that you needed Jesus. Uh, and listen, Jesus was on time and God would take and use uh, uh, people of God and the Word of God uh, to put that target on your heart uh, to know you was lost and you needed a Savior. Not only is, was he on time, but the Bible says he was on target. Not only that, but God was on task. Jesus was about the task, amen. What was his task? Let's see what it was. It tells us right here in this chapter. It says this, verse 5, to redeem them which was what? Under the law, that we might receive the what? Adoption. And because you are sons, God has sent forth his spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore art thou more and more, more servant, but a son? And if thou is the son, he, he says this, then an heir of God through who? Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus was not only on time, not only was Jesus on target, but thank God, Jesus was on the task. He is doing the work. Yes, he did. The Bible says predestinated before the foundation of the world, Jesus would come. The Hebrew writer says that he was looking to that old cross and it was the joy that was set before him that he would endure the shame of folks and be despised and rejected and spit on and beat. And the Bible says because of that, that it was his joy to do the will of God. Listen, the Bible says the reason that he came is God gave a gift that mankind could be brought back to the knowledge of his sin and Jesus could be the same 
Savior, the one about the test. And when he said in John 19, 30, it's finished, he finished the plan of salvation for mankind. Little boys and girls can come to this altar. Men and women can come to this altar. Why? Because he's still on task. He's still doing the work of the Father. He's still doing it. The Holy Spirit, what did he do? When Jesus come, and the Bible says that he went back to the Father, what happened? The Word says that God sent forth his Spirit. And the Spirit of God is what does the, uh, does the work in your heart. I thought it, it kind of strange uh, that folks, whenever a uh, man was separated from God, it was in the Garden of Eden. But listen, uh, the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 22 uh, that when Jesus got on his knees before God and he began to cry out in the book of Matthew and the Bible says in Luke 22 that his sweat became as great drops of blood and he began to say, Father, if it be thy will, uh, let this cup pass from me. And he prayed it the third time. Then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. What happened, folks? We were sold out in the garden, but thank God we were paid for in the garden. We received the redemption. You say, well, Jesus had to go to the cross. Listen, he settled it in the garden. The devil tried to, tried to get him to not go way before the cross. Jesus settled it in the garden. You see, he was on task. I believe that he paid a price that you and I could be adopted into the family of God. He got a plan for you this morning. Might be your time this morning. Spirit of God might have already targeted your heart. and Spirit of God's at task this morning, working in your heart. Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, God, I got some truth to tell you this morning. That those words verily, verily means truly, truly. He said, You must be born again. See, the Spirit of God's on its task this morning. Not me preaching, not anybody singing. Elijah saw a fire. Elijah saw, heard a great earthquake. God's not in it. There's a still, small voice. Sharon, why you give us a song? Come speaking to his heart. God's own task this morning through his spirit. His spirit might have said, listen, you need the gift of salvation this morning. You need to get saved this morning. You need to ask Jesus to be your personal Savior. You see, that's the task of the Spirit of God. He wants you to be saved. Child of God, are you living a defeated life this morning? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more Abundantly. I know the abundance of Christmas. But when's the last time you felt the Spirit of God? In the fullness of time, God sending forth His Son, made of a woman, under the law to redeem us from the law. We were servants to sin. But when Jesus come and did that task in my heart, I become as a son. I've been adopted into the family of God. Have you? God on task in your life this morning. Spirit of God been speaking in your heart. Have you received the abundance of God? Jesus said these words in John 14. We hear them a lot. 
Let not your hearts be troubled. You believed in God, but believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have what? And he said these words, I go and prepare a place for you. If I go, I'll come again and receive you into myself that where I am, you may be what? Also, this Christmas day. Harky H. got up yesterday morning and went to work. Went into his job. Went into his business. I don't know all the details. But I'm sure he is planning maybe some time with his family on Christmas. Maybe had plans for today. Maybe got, had some New Year's plans. But you know what? God come on time. God was on target. He, he come down to Yates Home Store yesterday and took Harky out. It, it might be your turn before New Year's. Has God done a work in your life? Have you been saved by God's grace? As we stand together this morning, would you let the Lord come?